In one anonymous email sent to me, my life is going to be destroyed forever. The email said, I met my ex-wife Kelly when we were in college when she asked me for some notes one day. We had been sitting next to each other for weeks without a word until then. We started dating and got serious pretty quickly, which upset my younger brother Robert. Robert was about 16 when I started dating Kelly, and you could tell that he had a bad crush. She was always nice and took it in stride. After Robert left home and got into college, I let him move in with us. Kelly and I had been together about three years, living together for two. We all had a good relationship. Kelly started complaining things were misplaced soon. One of her earrings would disappear, her panties, sometimes it was socks. She was under a ton of stress, changing medications, so we both chalked it up to her ADHD giving her an issue until one day I caught my brother with a pair of her missing panties. We found everything he stole. We kicked him out and he goes to live with my parents again and begs for forgiveness and decides to go to therapy. It takes about five years, but we all decide it was water under the bridge, Kelly included. Robert had a hard life growing up. He said it was all acting out. Late 2022, I received an anonymous email that Kelly was cheating on me. They knew dates she was out of town, names of co-workers and everything. They gave me no photographs, but knew enough details that I was sure they were telling the truth. Kelly fought me on it, denied it, begged for marriage counseling, but cheating is a solid deal breaker for me. Robert came to stay with me as my emotional support while Kelly was there. Kelly asked me to get him to leave multiple times, stating that he was watching her and making her feel uncomfortable. But all I said were things I'd rather not repeat about her not being trustworthy. The day she left last April, she said to me that it was going to turn out to be my pervert brother and that if it is, she hopes I feel every ounce of pain I just put her through. My brother has apparently been racked with guilt and confessed last weekend. He told me in front of our parents. I couldn't say anything. I just walked out and went home. I turned my personal phone off and I've just been walking in a daze. I go to work, come home, I watch TV and I go to bed. I can't tell you what I've even eaten for the past week, what I've watched. My dad came by to talk to me tonight and he wants me to talk to my brother, tell him that it's going to be okay and we can work through it. I turned on my personal phone for the first time to see hundreds of text messages from my brother. I just want to reach out to Kelly and beg for forgiveness and ask her if we can start over. Here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, Not to kick you when you're down, but your soon-to-be ex-wife warned you, and it sounds like your parents support him still, even though he's blown up your relationship twice and terrorized your wife for years. You all made your choices, and now you're going to have to live with them. You should tell her she was right so she can have validation, but don't expect understanding, forgiveness, or reconciliation. She's better off away from you and your toxic family, especially that psycho stalker brother of yours. Then, user 2 said, You should have trusted and listened to Kelly. She's better off, and you should not bother her. Update. I contacted my ex-wife. I vented on Reddit about finding out that my brother faked that my wife had an affair on a business trip. I'd been in a daze since I found out. I kept reading that everyone said leave Kelly alone, but I sent her an email to where we had been communicating about little things that popped up and then I went to bed. I apologized, told her that I know I can't mend things, but that she was right and that Robert was out of my life and probably my parents too. I didn't expect an email back, but I received one, and it was massive. It was filled with a lot of personal things that I don't want to repeat. She said she understood the desire to listen to that email, but that she wasn't even able to defend herself, that I just gave her time to get out and then immediately moved Robert into our home, where she watched him intentionally keep us from communicating as she was forced to leave. She said she would have done anything, let me talk to her co-workers, check her geo-tracking, but Robert kept a permanent buffer and I allowed it, belittling and mocking her along with him whenever she attempted to talk to me. She thanked me for the closure on this chapter of her life and she wished me the best, but she asked me not to contact her again, ever. After the year and three months she said she endured, she isn't the same woman I knew. She asked me to set the record straight with any former mutual acquaintances, but she honestly never wants to hear from any of them either, and to tell them so. She told me that I poisoned that well when I accused her of what I did, and it was the most bitter and isolating experience she's ever dealt with, and that she genuinely feels nothing for anyone in her former life, 
including me. She also told me cutting out Robert is a great idea, but don't cut them off trying to get her back or even in her good graces because she is moving overseas on a finance visa to try things out with her new fiancé. She said they've only been dating eight months, but she's never felt this way about anyone in her life and that she thinks he might be her soulmate. She told me to learn from my mistakes with her and to find someone to love more than I loved her. It crushed me to see the word soulmate. She used to tell me that all the time. She thought I was her soulmate. I called my dad yesterday morning after reading the email, and I told him that I am not going to comfort Robert. He ended my marriage through lies, made me a liar to all of my friends, and isolated and hurt one of the most loving, loyal people on the planet who tried so many times to help him. I told my dad my relationship with Robert is over, and I told him that if he has a problem with that, then my relationship with him is over too. My dad told me he truly understood how bad it was once I broke it down that way. I'm going to put in a transfer request at work tomorrow. I live on the west coast. Maybe I'll head to the east coast. I'm going to get a change in scenery, a therapist, and figure myself out. Here are some more relevant comments. User 1 said, I'm glad she found her soulmate. I hope she can heal from the pain that you put her through. Then, User 2 said, I'm sure you are feeling pretty down about this response, but it sounds to me like she got her life together after you pulled the rug right out from under her. And she is on the right path. I'm happy for her and glad she found someone who will treat her with the respect she deserves. You, however, need to do some serious soul searching and ask yourself why you were so quick to believe these lies. I'm sure some simple replies to the email asking for additional details would have caused the whole scheme to fall apart and why you didn't respect your own wife enough to listen to her. You've got a lot of work to do on yourself before you even think of embarking on another relationship. All right, y'all, I'm gonna be real with you. After he got that email and after he said he immediately decided to break up with his wife or divorce her, I was not on his side ever since that. Because, and I haven't said it in a while since I've started on this channel, but I am a big advocate of communication. And you know what there wasn't? Communication. He said, cheating is a big deal for me. Bye. Okay? Cheating is a big deal. But it is a big accusation. So you got to make sure you got all the info straight, or at least enough of it. And there was no actual evidence. Yes, the person in the mysterious person in the email had a lot of, uh, you know convincing stuff but there was no like actual proof and then op was like okay bye he didn't think about talking to her or listening to her or I, I just i don't know there wasn't enough communication and he paid the price and she definitely rubbed it in his face a little when she was like i found my soulmate and i'm going to france middle finger <laughs> next story Story number two, my mother-in-law stole my collection of vintage skeleton keys to sell at a pawn shop and buy herself a new phone. My mother-in-law is insanely entitled, and my wife's enabling of her has made our marriage very hard at times. Mother-in-law has come to us for money a lot because she keeps spending herself into a hole since she is a hoarder and a shopaholic. Her house is full of garbage, junk, and unopened stuff she never uses. The house is rodent infested too. She has one semi-clean room in the whole building, and it's the master bedroom. She's mocked it up like a little studio apartment with a futon to sleep on and use as a couch, an entertainment center with TV and streaming, and a makeshift kitchen consisting of the adjoining bathroom a mini fridge, and a microwave. Mother-in-law is also overweight because she eats out a lot. Recently, my mother-in-law came to us wanting me specifically to buy her a new smartphone as an unprompted gift. And she threw a massive fit when I refused. And I mean a child temper tantrum kind of fit. Why did she want a new phone so suddenly? Hers was two years old. That's literally it. As far as I know, it still worked fine. Even my wife has confirmed this, but my mother-in-law was resolute that she deserved a new phone. And before leaving, she yelled at us that we are supposed to be pampering her now that she's an old woman. She's 53. My wife also did not want to buy her mother the phone because she gave her money not long before to make sure her bills were paid. Now, I have quite a collection of vintage skeleton keys, and I mean like good ones. Like ones to particular hotels, the large ornate sergeants, brass railroad keys, reading hardware, etc. My collection as a whole should easily be worth two to three thousand dollars. Some of those keys are super rare. I kept them in a locked display cabinet, 
But a few days ago, I came home to find my entire collection gone. The cabinet had been forced open. I checked the CCTV for the living room and saw my mother-in-law force open the cabinet with a small crowbar. She then put all the keys in a couple of boxes she'd brought with her and then left with them. I called my mother-in-law right away and demanded she return my collection. She then nonchalantly told me she sold the entire collection at a pawn shop already and used the money for her new phone. Then she said it was my fault and she had to do it because I wouldn't give her the money. My wife was seemingly on my side until I said I was going to call police. She begged me to just drop it and even suggested I just start a new collection. I refused to let it go because a lot of those keys were not only expensive, they are irreplaceable. I spent 10 years building that collection, but my wife kept blowing up at me, telling me to just let it go. So I slept in the guest room that night and sought online help the next day when my best friend told me to try Reddit. I've been a lurker here before, but making an account wasn't hard. My mother-in-law has been in trouble in the past, but this was the first time I've known of that she'd stolen from us. I needed help, so I asked here. The resounding advice finally made me pull my head out of my bum to realize I was the only one keeping my marriage afloat. And it would likely never get any better if my wife wasn't on my side when her own mother steals something irreplaceable from me. Now to answer some quick questions I got before. 1. How did my mother-in-law get into the house? My wife unilaterally gave her a key when we moved in, that's why. 2. Why did I have CCTV cameras in the living room? Really? Wouldn't you do that if you had something valuable on display there? 3. Is mother-in-law on drugs? No idea, but she's always been crazy. 4. Did mother-in-law steal from us before? Not that I have been able to tell, and I've checked everything I could think of. 5. What kind of phone did mother-in-law get? Not a clue, but probably one of the cheaper smartphones with the amount of money she got selling my stuff, unless she's on a payment plan. 6. Did my wife use money to placate her mother before? Yes, she did. We primarily have separate accounts, but we do have a joint account we pay the bills with, so it's not used for savings. In two years of marriage, I'd say it happened roughly five times. Every time my wife took money from the joint account for her mother, she always replaced it on her next payday. Though in hindsight, I think she only did so because she knew I'd never let it go, because she would always have an attitude with me for a few days after. I was in a bad marriage fog before, but this whole situation has snapped me right out of it. 7. Will I lock down my credit card? I already have. Though I'm not sure my wife or her mother would be so stupid to do something like that after my mother-in-law was recently arrested. I have gotten my collection back and hidden it somewhere my wife and mother-in-law have no idea where it is. I'll provide more details in another post tomorrow. Edit. Since it keeps being mentioned, yes, I did call the police. Yes, an arrest was made. Yes, my wife is soon to be my ex. Know that I am taking many precautions right now. Update 1. Back to what happened that day, police did come and take my statement a bit over an hour after I called the non-emergency line. I had footage and the documentation of my collection ready. And then there were some texts I went out of my way to get from mother-in-law to bait her into a confession. I wanted as much evidence as possible so she couldn't lie to police. When I texted her, demanding she get my collection back, she actually LOL'd at me and told me not a chance, and even boasted that she thought I was a pathetic son-in-law and my key collection was tacky anyway. I told her to at least tell me what pawn shop she sold the keys to so I could go buy them back, and how much they paid her for them. And the dimwit admitted it all right away with glee and text. I had everything I needed for the police before they even showed up. The cops took the whole matter more seriously than I thought. I was worried they call it a civil matter since the thief was my mother-in-law and she had a key to the house. But they arrested her before long, and police went to the pawn shop before it closed to retrieve my collection. I got it all back from the police after a couple of days, and for the moment, I've put the collection in a safe, secure place that no one can get to. The pawn shop pretty much gave up the entire key collection to police right away like it was a bag of hot potatoes. Though I scrutinized every important key brought back, as far as I can tell, it's all there. That was a huge sigh of relief. I took time off work and barely slept for two days because of this whole ordeal. Also, the cabinet mother-in-law broke into is pretty much a loss since she mangled the lock and doors prying it open. Thankfully, it wasn't an antique and just something I got used for $50. 
so I'm just going to take it to the dump sooner or later. From her text before, I found out mother-in-law sold the whole collection to the pawn shop for a whooping total of $300. For a collection of hundreds of antique keys valued at two to three grand as a total, the number felt like a punch in the gut to me. Likely, the pawnbroker knew how valuable the collection could be as a whole. I mean, it's not like hitting a jackpot or anything, but money is still money. Especially when a dumb little lady walks in with a box of goodies. Anyone else hear Mr. Krabs laughing? Anyway, the cost of repayment to the shop was supposed to be on my mother-in-law, but my wife paid them back out of our joint account instead. From what the shop owner said, mother-in-law told them the key collection belonged to her deceased husband, and she was sick of the whole collection sitting in storage. So they believed her. But just to be clear, she's not a widow. Her husband divorced her, and he left the state around 15 years ago. Mother-in-law lives off of social security and food stamps. She also holds garage sales every few months, and she often demanded our soda and beer cans so she could get the deposit money recycling them. Mother-in-law doesn't drive. She gets around on an electric scooter that tows a bicycle trailer. She lives in a long paid off house, and she would not be having money troubles if she wasn't overspending every month. And she always counts on my wife to pick up the slack when she comes up short. My wife and I got in a huge fight when she got back home because I had her mother arrested, but I told her I'm done with her enabling of her toxic mother. I said I was changing the locks ASAP and banning her mother from the house. Also, I said that either we got marriage counseling or I'd be inquiring about my options for separation from an attorney. I thought my wife would beg me not to do that, but instead she just called me horrible, packed a suitcase and walked out to go to a motel. I just sat on the couch and let her go. She repeatedly looked like she was waiting for me to ask her to stay, but I didn't. In the morning, she texted me that she would be bailing her mother out and wanted me to transfer her the money to pay for it since I was the one who got her mother arrested. When I said no, all I got back was a sarcastic wow, and that was it. Not too long after, I had a gut feeling and checked the balance of the shared bank account, and my wife had taken out a lot of money. I wasn't sure if all that was needed was for bail, so I called the pawn shop later. The owner confirmed my wife had come in and paid him back the 300 that he paid her mother for the keys. He was also quite angry and said he didn't want any of us in his shop ever again. I understood his anger and weirdly enough had a fairly long talk with the guy. And he understands now that I'm not part of the crazy. I tried to call and text my wife for hours, but she didn't answer. That evening, I did manage to find her. I knew which motel she would likely go to, and I was right. It was both cheap and not far away. I found her car and then figured out which room she was in. She looked positively shocked to see me when she opened the door. I confronted her about the money she'd used from our shared account. She basically said that since I refused to pay her mother's bail after I was the one who had her arrested, she got the money from me another way. Then, smugly stated she wasn't paying that money back into the shared account this time, and told me that's the karma I get before shutting the door in my face. Then she said through the door that she would call the cops on me if I didn't leave. The smug look she'd given me reminded me of nasty teenage girls when they get their way. It really ticked me off. I already knew my marriage was pretty much over, but that night it really sank in. I had a long sit down with some old video games and cola to think about my future. The house is rented, so I'm not renewing my half of the lease and will soon be apartment hunting. The last month of the lease is in March, but I may leave sooner, depending on how soon I can find an apartment. We have no kids yet, thank God, so that's another thing I currently have in my favor. The next day, I changed the locks on the house and removed all of my money from the joint bank account and stopped all automated payments to and from it. I made sure to take only the amount of money I'd put into the account. There was still more than enough in it for me to break even and still leave the minimum required balance on the account. Either way, the cost of mother-in-law's bail and paying back the pawn shop was now entirely out of my wife's pocket now. And I don't think she's noticed yet, but it shouldn't be long. I've been to a couple of different divorce lawyers already, and I picked the second one since the first seemed like they were only there for a paycheck. I'll have the divorce papers served soon. I loved my wife, but it's clear she didn't love me. So, I can't stay with her anymore. She can have her thieving hoarder mommy all to herself now. We both have very comparable incomes, so I'll be pushing for a clean split divorce. This woman didn't deserve me, and I fell for her act. She didn't want a husband, she wanted an insurance plan. I'll be clear on this, I won't be changing my mind about divorce. My soon-to-be ex-wife can beg and love bomb all she wants, even if she bothers to. I've never been her number one, and I'm not gonna settle for being her number two, in my own marriage. 
it is over. Edit. Yes, I asked the landlord to allow me to change the locks. He was all for it when I told him what happened. All I had to do was mail him a copy of the new key. He doesn't want my mother-in-law to ever have a key to the house again. Update 2. Just because I found the thought of it humorous, I'll be referring to my wife as wifey a lot from now on. Also, I know it seems like I'm posting too fast, but remember, this originally started around 10 days ago, and I've not wasted time in getting the divorce started. I also apologize for the length of the post, as I could not keep it short. It really didn't take me long to find and hire a divorce lawyer, and she's mean. Yes, my lawyer is a woman, and she seems pretty good at her job. She asked me a couple of times if I was really sure I wanted to do this. But once I explained my full story to her and showed some evidence, she agreed with me when I said I wanted to start ASAP. So, she got the ball rolling, and oh, this divorce is going to cost me, but I don't care. I'll rebuild my savings later as a free man. I don't even want to rent the house I'm currently living in anyway. Wifey pushed for that. I'd have been happy staying in our old apartment we used to share until we could have actually afforded to buy a house together instead. But that's obviously never happening. I'll be paying a lot less for an apartment once we separate. Before coming home, Wifey spent some time at a cheap motel when she bailed her mother out of jail, and she even threatened to call the police on me when I went to see her there. I changed the locks with my landlord's permission while Wifey was still away and sent her a text saying I'd done so. But I guess she didn't bother to look since she never responded. So upon returning home, she ended up pounding on the door and screaming at me to let her in. I just watched her through the doorbell cam and let her keep it up for a while before she finally got on her phone to call me. I was already walking home from having dinner with my best friend when she called, and I pointed out the text she'd not bothered to read. When I got home to let her in, she was puffy-cheeked, teary-eyed, and red with a bit of cat butt face. I had a new copy ready for her and told her if she gave a copy to her mother again, I'd be notifying our landlord as they were already very angry she'd given a key to her mother to begin with. Not sure what the landlord could have done, but it was enough to make wifey comply for the moment. Plus, I'm not going to be living here much longer anyway. My mother-in-law still believes she did absolutely nothing wrong and is playing victim to wifey every chance she gets. She's not allowed over anymore for obvious reasons. And I've been repeatedly called a monster by her and wifey. And I've been repeatedly called a monster by her and wifey. I've never been more glad that mother-in-law has no friends, because then she'd be telling them all her convoluted version of the story to paint me as a villain. I just know it. She was told how much my key collection is roughly worth and what kind of felony charges she could be facing, though my collection was returned fully intact, so she may get the charges lessened. I do like to hope she gets a decent punishment at least, but I'm not really counting on the system to throw the book at a manipulator like her. As I said in my previous post, Wifey also paid her mother's bail and what she owed to the pawn shop with money out of our bank account, and then smugly told me that she wouldn't be putting the money back. Basically, that was a terrible power move and her only way to try and put all the cost on me. I've since removed everything I've had in that account and stopped all future payments to it, so she can't spend my money too. And I've changed my passwords to pretty much everything. Wifey flipped the hell out on me for it when she finally checked the account a couple of days ago, because that meant that what she paid for mother-in-law's bail and reimbursing the pawn shop was all in her own money only. And now there was no more access to my funds to supplement her own with. I just ignored her tantrum and went into the home office to watch anime on my computer. She banged on the door for a while demanding I talk to her. I just stayed quiet and put on headphones. Wifey has repeatedly demanded I drop all the charges against her mother, and even said that if I really loved her, I would not only stop all of this, I'd cover the cost too. When I kept refusing, she moved into the spare bedroom. She tried to kick me out of the master bedroom first, but I made it clear I'm not giving up the master bedroom when she's the one at fault. She tried to start taking my stuff out, but I just blocked her while pointing my finger at her face and said no, like I was talking to a dog. She ended up crying and saying I was demeaning her, but I didn't care. Then, for some more deception on her part, she admitted to me out of pure spite that until this mess had started, she had been planning on letting her mother come live with us full time soon because of the state of her hoarder house. She boasted that she was just going to move her in while I was at work. I told her we were supposed to be equal partners before this all happened, and I was sick of her unilateral decision making. As long as I am paying 50% of the lease, her mother will not be living here. And if she tried, I'd throw all of her mother's stuff out immediately. 
Wifey looked like she wanted to explode and stormed off to have a drink and a loud phone call with her mom in the kitchen. I just started removing her stuff from the master bedroom and left it in the other room for her. I've put a new lock on the door to the master bedroom too. I had wifey served at her job, which she said really embarrassed her in front of her colleagues. And she flipped out on me again once she got home. Apparently, she didn't take my threats of divorce seriously until those papers were actually in her hands. She said I couldn't do this, but I told her I was done. She made it more than clear where she stands. I told her I learned a rather interesting phrase online. When people show you who they really are, believe them. And she's clearly shown me who she really is, and it's not the woman I fell in love with. That woman disappeared and got replaced with an entitled mommy's girl who refuses to act her age right after we got married, which makes it pretty obvious she did that intentionally. At this point, I don't think she ever loved me. Just my wallet. I can't stay married to a woman who conned me into marrying her. Then she started screaming at me that she wasn't a gold digger, so I asked her if she'd have been inclined to stay married to me if I'd done all the same things to her. She tried to deny it at first, then looked around like she was trying to find a better answer. Then she just gaslit to deflect as usual, but I had none of it. I told her right then and there that I'm not renewing the lease on the house with her because I don't want to live with a petulant woman child I can't trust. And if she wants to keep the house, she can go ahead and start a new lease to move her mother in once I'm gone. Finally, that's when the real waterworks started. She said I was destroying our family. And I said, what family? And pointed out how we don't even have kids and her mother is more important to her than me. We have no family. Then I just walked away. She loudly cried in the living room for hours, but I ignored her. Now she's giving me the hardcore silent treatment and won't even look me in the eyes. I'm actually enjoying it, which seems to just make her angrier. As an added bonus, I warned my current landlord about wifey wanting to move her mother in. I gave him all the details I had about mother-in-law, the state of her hoarder house, and how much of a deceptive mommy's girl wifey is, and warned him that if he let my mother-in-law live in any property he owns, she would turn it into an utter disaster. He thanked me for telling him and now is going to let wifey renew the lease on her own if she tries. He'll be advertising the property soon. Wifey has no idea yet, and likely would have only just barely been able to afford the house with her mother's help anyway. One more thing. Yesterday, someone warned me to take my name off the joint bank account entirely so I would not be on the hook for any overdraft. I took that to heart and went to the bank account to get it done. Only took a few minutes to do it, and the bank is 10 minutes away by car. All good now. I've been working from home lately, so I had the time. All statements from the account were already printed and given to my lawyer too, so I can wash my hands of it. Edit. I don't know if it's the same rules everywhere, but the bank had no problem removing my name from the account as a co-signer when I pushed for it. There were no debts on the account and had plenty more than the minimum balance. The bank likely did tell wifey, but whether or not she knows I did it, it does not matter as she's currently not talking to me. Edit 2. I've noticed a few comments pointing out how it was completely unnecessary I pointed out my lawyer is a woman. Looking back on it, I did write that like a complete jerk. I was just rather excited in the moment about it. Not that that's an excuse. I acknowledge that, but how quickly this lawyer helped me just made me so happy. I'll make sure not to sound like such an idiot when speaking of her again from now on. Update number three. Let me be clear on some details. I've been told many times that I'm condescending, twisting things, acting like a douche, etc. Well, apart from how hot-blooded I got from all of this, I'll tell you about the crap I dealt with before coming to Reddit. My wife used to act very different around me the three years we were together before getting married. She was kind, regularly scolded her mother if she did anything bad, didn't expect me to help her mother with anything either. She acted like she was perfect around me. Her mother was also a lot kinder and more apologetic towards me before I married her daughter. She was, believe it or not, a kind of sweet lady. Apart from being a hoarder, I used to be sympathetic towards her, and I hoped that she would get better, but things only got worse after saying my vows. As soon as we were back from the honeymoon, my wife and mother-in-law were very different. Things became their way or the highway, and I was treated like the bad guy by her and her mother for even having a different opinion on something. They regularly ganged up on me when they wanted to make me wrong about things. Wifey became a total brat and was acting like a rebellious teenager at home. 
our bedroom life became pretty dead too. In part because I get migraines, but also because she was never in the mood. We hadn't been intimate in four months before I even posted on Reddit. I have a bit of a low drive, so it didn't bother me too much, but she rarely initiated unless she had something to be happy about. Wifey remained her other self outside in front of people. She just took her mask off at home once she trapped me in this marriage. I've already explained the smug bratty attitude she had towards me when she used our shared bank account to pay her mother's bail and reimburse the pawn shop and then acted like the money would be out of my half of the account. Or about her smug attitude when admitting she had been planning to have her mother come live with us without asking if I thought it was okay. I can't take it anymore. She's made unilateral decisions on so much these past few years. Even giving mother-in-law a spare house key was all her. And that's what got my collection stolen. And before mother-in-law stole my collection, I just shut up and took the abuse from both of them, like the good little boy they wanted me to be. Why? Because I thought I was in love. I was deep in a marriage fog, but then people here pulled me out. It feels like I'm married to a spoiled teenager that wants me to talk to the hand if I even want to have a frank discussion about anything, unless we're in public. I get that this behavior has been deeply ingrained into her by her mother, but she refused any sort of counseling. If she'd agreed to the counseling and believed the counselor would have agreed with her, I'd know she'd need help. But the way she acts tells me she knows exactly what she's doing and doesn't care. I didn't even want the house we're living in, but wifey made it her hill to die on. I wanted to save so we could actually buy a house in a few years instead. But she wanted to keep up with the Joneses, and distance from her mother wasn't a factor. Our old apartment was actually closer to mother-in-law. Wifey just really wanted the house and practically said it was happening whether I liked it or not. Sure, the extra spice was nice, but I had to buy most of the new furniture. I'm miserable here. That's why I got so hot-blooded, and many here think I'm going scorched earth. I'm not. I could have actually done far worse. All I want is out of this house and out of this marriage. I am regretful that I had my wife served at her job. That went too far, but that's one of the few things I regret in this situation, and please don't blame that on my lawyer. That decision was all me. I wanted some payback and I made a bad call. But I can't undo it now that it's already been done. Wifey is still giving me the silent treatment, and we've been acting completely indifferent towards each other. I'd be completely fine if it stays this way till I can move out. Okay, so I get it. OP did some bad things. He kind of stumbled along the way, but I feel like the wife and her mother are kind of like the real villains here, right? OP admitted, and I agree that he did some wrong things, but like, they... He, 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 manipulating! Money, greedy, gold digger, hoarder, stealing, illegal. But anyway, what do you guys think? I don't feel like OP is like some super jerk here. Like his stuff got stolen. His wife took off the mask after they got married. His mother-in-law stole from him and broke the law amongst so many other things. And he finally realized like, oh, wow, these people aren't treating me right. Why would I stay in a relationship with people who aren't treating me right? Hold up. I'm getting a phone call. Hello, who is this? Oh, hi! It's the next story! Story number three. Am I wrong for being blindsided by a friend's birthday dinner costing me $1,100? Birthday dinner for a friend costs $540 per person. My wife and I were invited to a major city to celebrate a friend's 40th. There were two days in the schedule, but we could only attend one because of my work schedule. We went to a fancy dinner and expected it to be over the top and expensive because it's their 40th birthday and they have high paying jobs and like to splurge. We met everyone at dinner at a fancy restaurant and found out it was a family style six course meal. When the check came, our friend's wife put it all on her card and we assumed the bill would be split up afterwards. We knew it would be expensive, but we were okay with it. We went out for drinks afterwards, slept at our hotel, and drove back the next day. Today, our friend's wife messages us that the total minus tax and gratuity split between the 13 of us was 540 per person. We figured on the high end, we'd spend maybe half that for both of us. We really thought more like 300 total for both of us based on the quality of the food. I'm pretty offended that it wasn't communicated ahead of time that this meal was going to be a freaking mortgage payment. What do I do here? Edit 1. We expect to spend a lot of money going out with these friends. We have gone out several times where an evening cost us 250 to 300 per couple, but never anything like 1100 just for dinner. Edit 2. 
Thanks everyone for the comments. This got a much bigger response than I thought it would. I want to respond to some common comments here. We truly did not expect the host to pay for dinner. Based on previous events and dinner events with this group, we expected to pay for our own meal and drinks. When the bill came, the host, the birthday boy's wife, grabbed the bill and paid it with her card. We were surprised that it looked like she was paying, but now a couple of days later, she is sending out bills to the couples for their portion of an even split of the dinner. It was not discussed that there would only be one check for the group. Some of our other friends who came with us and were in on all the same communications leading up to this dinner were also completely surprised by the total amount of the meal. If it matters, they are very well off and still got sticker shock. This is validating for me because they've been with us in this group for many dinners with this couple and also did not expect this outcome. They got a bill for both nights that totaled just shy of $2,000 for foods on drinks and tabs that were paid at the time by the host couple. For those saying we should have asked ahead of time, I guess this is where I get hung up. We were anticipating a range based on many meals with this group, including birthday dinners. Why would we reach out to the host and ask, this isn't going to cost us more than $1,000, is it, when every past experience was substantially lower, 60 to 70% less maybe? We haven't asked for an itemized receipt yet, but looked up the cost of the family style dinner per person. Based on what we ate and drink, our total would come to right around $700. To be honest, I would have been surprised by that amount, but we're being asked to pay 400 more than that, and I think, as many have pointed out, we are getting charged for others' wine choices. We will either just send that amount or ask for an itemized receipt, as many have recommended. I believe our next course is, as many have recommended, to pay for what we had and distance ourselves from these people, or just never accept another invitation. Edit 3. My wife contacted the restaurant, and it turns out that there is a minimum per person charge that works out to $530 after tax and gratuity for reservations the size of our group. This is $200 per person more than we consumed, and the host never told us about it it, even when contacting us for payment. The host would have been aware prior to inviting us because she would have had to agree to it for the size of the group. The restaurant doesn't do reservations for that size party and has to make special arrangements. Here are some relevant comments. User 1 said, not wrong, not the a-hole. I don't know if things are usually different in the upper echelons of society, but to us peasants and peons, planning for expensive things means communicating accurate and prompt expected costs beforehand. Then OP said, the funny thing is that while these people are well off, I I know people that have way more money, Wall Street, vacations in Italy, second homes in New England, and would never assume that everyone in a party would be down for a 500 to 550 per person without discussing it first. Then user 2 said, was someone ordering $500 bottles of wine that only they drank? I would be asking to see the itemized total, and I would split the family style food costs and pay for your own specific beverages. But I would not pay a share of a high-end alcohol that only some of the guests drank. Then OP said, I did see some bottles of wine come out. My wife and I had two cocktails each. Then OP elaborated on if he messaged someone from the group for their opinion. Then OP provided some additional information. This meal could have been what I would have considered to be over the top expensive at 250 per person, and I would have been okay with it. That's definitely not easy money for me, but it would have at least seemed sane. I never would have possibly imagined that they would pick somewhere with a minimum over $500 each without explicitly getting buy-in from everyone, which is why we didn't interrogate them about it ahead of time. Update. We, my wife and I, wish we had done some more research, of course. We didn't because we've gone to plenty of expensive, expensive to us, meals with this couple from anywhere from $100 to $300, with $300 being the absolute most we've ever spent, and have an expectation that our friends would communicate it if something was going to be substantially different than what we are used to. Our mistake. The majority of comments mirrored our feelings that this minimum or even the average ticket price of the restaurant should have been communicated by the host ahead of time, and that this lack of communication is bizarre and pretty tacky. There were lots of comments saying we should have looked up at the menu, etc., and obviously, in hindsight, we wish we had. But the reality is that even if we had looked at the menu, this was, unbeknownst to us, a special event, and our host had selected a prefix menu with a table minimum that they did not communicate to us or anyone else. Other guests on our group were just as surprised by the final amount. Many other comments said not to pay them at all, which I could not seriously consider. Even though I'm upset by the situation, I totally intend to pay our own way, just not to be stuck paying for other people's expensive tastes. 
which is why we ended up texting the host that we were very surprised by the total price and asked to see a copy of the receipt. To her credit, she sent it right away. It confirmed the minimum price for the table and that others in the group had ordered very expensive wine and drinks that brought the overall bill up to and above the minimum. We added up our total, which hilariously comes to $666, so that's what we're sending them. Approximately 430 less than what they initially requested. Not sure where this leaves the friendship, but we won't be accepting dinner invitations anytime soon. My wife and I had a blast reading your responses and appreciate all of your perspectives. We will be cooking dinner at home for a while now. Here are some more relevant comments. User 1 said, Confused as to how the total bill of two people equals $666 when it was a minimum of $500 per person. Then OP said, That's the whole point. Our actual food and beverage, if ordered off the menu, cost $666. There was a minimum because of the number of people per restaurant policy. The minimum divided amongst all attendees was $550 per person, so $1,100 per couple. That information was never communicated to us. Then user 2 said, when you only order the chicken fingers and house red, favorite comment so far. One dollar for the extra honey mustard too, I'm sure, but I am glad you tallied it up, OP. So, I mean, I ain't a rich person, so like, I ain't got rich people problems, I got math problems, okay? So once you start throwing numbers and money at stuff at me, I'm just like, uh, what? This is why I eat at home, okay? If I never spend money, I won't be confused as to why I'm losing money. <laughs> but for real, yeah, the situation was a mess. The hosts could have communicated way better. Yeah, they could have looked up the menu. Uh, I guess the menu there didn't have the prices or something, I'm going to assume. I don't know. It feels like OP kept retroactively providing more details that other other people had to get from the comment section but uh i agree the uh the hosts were i'm not gonna say the a-holes we don't know if they did this maliciously or ignorantly but uh it was done stupidly and uh, yeah i don't agree with that you should communicate to the people that they gonna be spending money and communication solves a lot of problems and it prevents a lot more and you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to go find some cantaloupe. I haven't had any in a while. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. It means a lot. Bye-bye.